In part one of this video, I talked about what I considered to be the foundation of everything about investing without your own money. I told you the story of how my parents often told me that money is the foundation for my money and how I decided to look for another opinion about money. I found that opinion from those who have made significant money and that changed my life. For more than 11 years, I've been able to get investment from different people including strangers who didn't know me from Adam. I told you about some of the books I read which taught me about other people's money and how to get it and I told you about the need to bury yourself into understanding whatever you want to invest in even before you try to get someone else to invest in your idea. If you've not seen part 1 of this video, you must watch this after this one so we'll link to it in the description box and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Forget the banks I remember sometime in the year 2007 or so, I had an idea and I wanted to raise investment for it via a bank in my country. I approached the bank and it didn't take me long before I saw that I was never going to be successful in raising investment from the bank. So, the first thing I want you to do when starting is to forget the banks. Of course, this is not a commandment because I'm talking from my limited experience as a guy who lives in a developing country. Since I don't know everything about every other country, I'm not likely to be able to tell what is going on in your country. Having said that, what I know with banks in my country is that if you don't have track records that show you've been managing reasonable amounts of money before or have collateral, you probably won't get them to give you money. If a similar thing that happens in your country, I advise you to forget the big institutions and focus on people, individuals and this brings another problem which is, how do I get other people to trust me? Let me tell you a personal story. Like a few years ago, I sat down and asked myself, why is it that wherever I go, I always get people to like, trust and support me? I mean, I always hear people complaining about the fact that the human race is doomed. No one likes you and no one wants to support you. Coming from a country that is highly stigmatized because of the few evil ones amongst us, everyone seems to believe that they are on their own but I was rarely on my own. Whenever I go, I find people to support me and I wanted to know why I'm different. This is what I found out. First, you see what you get. By this I mean, if you think everyone is evil, you'll meet enough evil people. If you think people are generally nice and supportive, you'll meet nice, supportive and good people. Maybe the law of attraction plays a game here, I cannot tell. What I can tell you is that your body language, words and action will show what your deepest world view is and those external signals will either make you attractive to the right or wrong people. Another thing I found out is, if you lie in front of people, they know that you're lying to them. It's that simple. A personal story to demonstrate this is what happened to me around the year 2011. I needed some capital and I discussed it with a friend. The only money he had was the money he wanted to use for his school fees but he decided to give it to me. Taking the risk of not being able to finish his education and he told me something. He said he can never give such money he gave to me to his blood brother and the reason is that he didn't trust them. You have to be trustworthy if you want to get other people to invest in you. I can say this to you a million times, you have to be trustworthy. And one other thing I perceive about trustworthiness is that it seems to follow you everywhere you go. The reason why I say this is because I have met strangers who seem to trust me within minutes after they meet me. Again, I am not a psychologist and I can't tell you how that happens but I suspect that something in your body language voice and words tend to reveal who you are to the people. So, be honest, truthful and trustworthy if you want to get other people to invest in your idea. Have a track record Sometimes in the year 2016, I had a business idea and I needed the amount which was a lot to me then. I sat down on my computer and I composed a mail to about three friends. One of them asked us to meet and we did. After our meeting, he promised to invest more than the money I needed. I was crazy and I thought he might not follow up with his promise. 
but it did some days after the meeting. What makes this investment surprising to me was the fact that this man, who is now my good friend, knew almost nothing about me in the real world. We met online and I had only visited him about two times. I lived two states away and there was no way on earth he could ever trace me if I decided to run away with his investment. So, what makes such people drop crazy amounts for you without any collateral, guarantee or something like that? I've talked about trustworthiness and that is very important. The other important thing is your brand or track records. By this I mean the combination of everything that is made up of you. For example, I think everyone who knows me has always known me to be an actor. I talk a lot but I do even more than I talk. I am proactive and I can make sacrifices. I don't make excuses and if I tell you I wanted to achieve something, you can trust me that I can sacrifice even my very life to achieve it. So I guess with everything this my friend knows about me online, he knows that his investment is safe. You have to build such a brand. If you have a brand that is about proactiveness, a brand that is about actions, a brand that is about making sacrifices, people around you and even strangers tend to know and tomorrow if you need them to invest in your idea, they will be defenseless. Endure Rejections I have been rejected many times in my career as an entrepreneur and I think you get to a point where you get used to it. While you're starting, you must endure that most hated word, no, people will reject you and that's fine. If you take their rejection personal, then you won't move to another person. Don't think about a million dollars. A young guy once visited my office. He should be around 22 years old. He wanted to start a business and when he showed me his business plan, I saw a crazy amount of money. From experience, I knew that he didn't even need 20% of the money he was planning to get and that is a problem. Most people who want to invest usually want to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars. To me, this is the indication that you want to buy your way to riches, which never works. It's a painful fact that your first three businesses or investments are not likely to succeed. The reason is that you're not as smart as you think you are. What happens most times is if you put too much money on your first or second investment or business and it collapses, you may never recover from such failure. But if the amount is small, you can always stand up and try again. Another advice I have for you is, don't invest in any business until you build a business. Today, everyone thinks that Warren Buffett is a great investor. What most people don't know is that he was an entrepreneur first and foremost. I know this advice is not for everyone but if you're still young, make sure you invest first in your own business and learn how to build a business before you even think of investing in stocks forex or even cryptocurrency. The reason for this is because building your own business teaches you the fundamentals of how money is being made and that helps you to figure out the right investments from other places. Another valuable advice I think I should give you is look at the internet and maximize every free resource the internet has to offer you. Take for instance, I am a writer and in the past if you want to be a successful writer, you need investments or support for a printing house. In the last month alone, more than 1.5 million people consume my work on the internet. If you convert that to the monetary value, I'll probably need $100,000 in the year 1986 to achieve that. So, be curious and pay attention to the technologies around you because some of these technologies can eradicate the need for money. As a talkative, it is very difficult for me to know maybe I make sense sometimes. Please watch part 1 and part 2 of this video about how to invest without money two times and let me know if the video makes sense to you. You'll see the link to the first part in the subscription box below. We love you.